Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in the Digilog series of computer history. And in this episode I want to talk about this uh, beautiful uh, HitKit H89 or mm, how it's known by its other name uh, Zenith Z89. Uh, we can't really talk about the H89 without talking a little bit about the company uh, behind this uh, wonderful machine. Um, this was produced by a company called Heath. Uh, Heath is a fairly well-known electronics manufacturer that was in manufacturer that was in the business for about eight years, from between 1912 up to uh, about 1992. Uh, they are very known for making kits, electronic kits. So, for example, they have uh, they used to have oscilloscope kits, uh, transceiver kits, amplifier kits, and so on. They were fairly cheap um, and fairly successful. Um, around the, the mid-1970s, uh, mid to late 1970s, when the personal computer uh, industry uh, was starting to rise and, and then people were looking around for, for, for purchasing um, personal computers, um, he had the idea that they could release basically kits that people could build home their own computers. So their first one was a computer called H8, it was an 8-bit um, uh, personal computer that had a, a terminal attached to it, I believe the H9, and a disk unit, and, uh, and the computer was, was very, very successful. And, and it, it, was, um, it, it made the company uh, interested and focused more and more on the development of, of, of kits, um, of, of computers. Um, the successor to H8 was the one that we have right here, which is the, the H89, that came in uh, as a kit form. Um, around 1979, when this was made, uh, the company was actually purchased by uh, Zenith Data Systems, who was also interested in developing personal computers at the time, and they renamed this one uh, Zenith uh, Z-89 uh, and they also had a Z-90 version um, and they decided that they, they could might as well just build or pre-build them effectively instead of giving the components to make their make own and then just sell it directly to business which was very successful at the time. Um, this machine is uh, primarily a, a CPM computer effectively so um, it's powered by a, a Z80 processor, in fact it has actually two of them because as it happens this is both a terminal and a computer. Um, uh, one Z80 processor uh, operates a terminal and one it operates the computer and that actually was a, a selling point in their advertisers as you can see here uh, in this um, advertisement printed uh, at the time. Um, so the machine uh, has a 2 MHz processor, has an integrated screen and a non-separatable uh, keyboard and it comes with a um, single-sided double density uh, floppy drive which actually operates on hard sector floppies uh, like those ones that I have here. Uh, hard sector floppies, just to make a, a simple parenthesis, um, are basically uh, floppies which have um, sector by sector demarcation uh, it's a physical hole and disk, so if you, you spin this, you'll actually see um, th th there is a small hole from place to place to mark where the sector ends and another sector, another sector starts. So you have to have this special disk to be able to operate this. And, you know, being a Z80 processor, uh, it supported CPM, which was a very successful operating system at the time. And it also supports uh, HIT's uh, propri proprietary operating system, which was called HDOS. Now, the machine is, itself is actually built very well, and you buy it um, um, uh, pre-made. Pre, pre uh, it's actually very sturdy building, and I, I, I absolutely love the keyboard, even though it is not a mechanical keyboard as such. Um, there is a very good feel of pressing each key, and they all feel really solid, especially the space bar key, um, something that is reminiscent to me of mechanical keyboards, that you can actually press on one end, and the whole key goes down. And it has a sticky caps lock key, which is really, really sweet. I love those. You just press it and sits down. Um, and unlike many other 8-bit computers at the time, it does have a numerical keypad on the side. Um, you could get versions of this one uh, that had not one uh, full height 
floppy drive, but two uh, half height, and um, there also uh, there's an H77 external dual uh, floppy disk drive you can get to it. Um, on the back of the machine, uh, you, we have the serial uh, port, um, two serial connections, because remember this is, uh, after all, um, also a terminal uh, floppy disk um, uh, cont um, port so that you can connect an external uh, floppy disk drive on parallel port. So uh, let's, let's give it some power and see what this uh, machine can actually do. Before we power it on, I just want to show you what a uh, hard sector marker looks like. So you can see here uh, there is actually a hole in the disk. Um, this marks a start or uh, the, be the start or the end of one sector. And there are many of those on the disk that look like that. Um, the fact that uh, Heath moved from electronics manufacturer to uh, personal computer manufacturer was not a unique trend at the time. Um, other companies such as other companies such as SWTPC, who used to make audio equipment, uh, decided that there is there is a good um, uh, market in producing computers, and they themselves produce SWTPC uh, 6800. So um, this was, if not common. Um, there was definitely a trend at the time, in late 70s, when personal computing was starting, was starting to become an actual um, business that you can make money in. So let's turn it on and see what happens. It has a, a beautiful sound, by the way, one of the best sounding computers, if, you, if, if this thing can be mentioned. The screen is actually white on black, not green on black, and it really has great great con co uh, contrast even though this machine now is almost 40 years old um, the, 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 the quality of the, of the text is really really great so as you power the machine on you are offered um, uh, a ROM monitor that um, allows you to type uh, various commands and operate the machine um, and it allows you to do things uh, for example you could um, self-test the machine so if you type letter uh, g uh, it, that's short for go and there are different uh, rom functions uh, one of them is um, 7375 so uh, uh, this is uh, addressed in octal so if you execute that um, this uh, now uh, does a memory test an internal memory test of the machine the machine comes with 64 uh, kilobytes of memory and uh, as you can see, it's a dynamic RAM test, and, and, and it just it, it, it does multiple multiple pass tests over the memory. Um, shift reset resets the machine back. Um, if you want to uh, boot an operating system, um, such as the one that uh, I have here, which is um, uh, sorry, this disk, uh, I have CPM uh, right here. So if we if we put this in. Sorry, this way, close, and then we type B for boot, it expands that and we press return. It proceeds to uh, load CPM from the list. So as you can see, this loaded uh, specific version of CPM, the 64K heat slash Zenit CPM version 2204. It's what I, what I have here. And it, it, it comes with a few programs on the disk, basically your typical uh, CPM Buddhist, however, it does it da because this is special specifically compiled for the H89 machines. Uh, you you could con configure your machine, for example, sorry, configure your CPM disk. Um, and uh, this is basically does an inspection of the machine, figures out how much memory you have, what CPU, uh, what what uh, disk you have. So we recognize you have 64K of random access memory, uh, only one floppy drive, uh, the, the 9,600 9, serial, about serial rate, and uh, two serial ports. And it, you have to say this is correct, yes or no, and you say yes, and then it writes back to the disk, this configuration so it can be used uh, for later. Um, it does come with an assembly program and an editor, so you could uh, um, I presumably write Z80 assembly straight off. Um, 
And uh, you, you could do basically anything you could do with a CPM machine, except this one actually had more memory than normal because it has 64 kilobytes of memory and the addition of the external floppy, floppy drives, later hard disk, uh, made this a pretty desirable and somewhat powerful machine uh, to, um, considering it was running a processor at two uh, megahertz. And the fact that this machine is also a terminal, so you could use it as a terminal for, for, for um, as a workstation for a, for a server, uh, definitely made it desirable um, for for businesses to purchase, which is was part of the success that initially Heath and then Zenith, once they bought them, had with this machine. So let's have a look inside a computer, see what is in inside, inside of this case. To do that, actually, they have uh, added a very nice mechanism where the whole of the top just swivels out, just like a car hood. And there are two latches, one on each side of the machine, uh, that once you unlock, this can be open. So let's do just that. One is on this side. It's a little bit hard to get. There you go, I got it. And the other one is on the other side. They both hold, they both latches hold the case in place. Almost there, oh, there you go. So it just opens like that on hinges. Uh, all right, let's have the side for now. So what do we have here? Well, of course, this is the floppy drive. The logic board is behind uh, the screen. The power supply is actually there, which is why it has the, uh, the fan right above it, about here on the start. This one actually had a um, uh, memory expansion, which is this one here, which is why it has a 64 uh, kilobytes of uh, memory. And the, the cards on the other side, uh, at least one of them, is the controller for the floppy. So you could actually change the controller to get a different uh, floppy disk than what the machine originally came with. Um, it's very clean and very uh, neat inside. The analog board, you can't see it, but it's at the... Um, at the bottom of the case, underneath the CRT, uh, contains all the um, CRT controlling circuits. Um, yep, that is the logic board right there. And another uh, interesting feature of the computers at the time is that the, um, the motherboard connection, if you can call that the motherboard, it's not a, it's not a, a female style slot, but actually it's PIMS, a male style slot. And so the, the cars themselves have a female slot that inserts into that. That obviously changed once we moved on to I, uh, IBM PC compatibles when the ISA card uh, was, was a female style, style slot. Well, that, well, there you have it. Floppy drive, motherboard, memory ex uh, expansion, uh, floppy controller, power case, uh, power cables, and the uh, analog uh, board at the bottom and a very, very nice, in fact, it's actually really uh, narrow, it's not very deep um, CRT display. All right, so uh, there you have it, the HitKit H89, or how later it was called, Zenith uh, Z-89, a uh, CPM computer, computer that was for a while delivered as a construction kit, so you can build your own machine home, uh, with, at the time had a very good manual and a very detailed instructions so you could learn some basic electronics while you put together a pretty powerful computer for a time or you know if you had the extra money um, to buy the actual pre-built machine that would set you back around sixteen hundred uh, dollars or so um, but for that you got both a terminal um, as well as as a, as a decent computer um, this is the heat kit age 89 and um, thank you again for watching uh, digital collection video series in the computer history so thank you very much for watching please subscribe to my channel and see you next time bye